you are the manager of all the cases. Mm -hmm. Don't apply to a judge that maybe your views don't align or you, you never know. I had my social media all turned private. And you know, judges can be tough to work for. If you take stuff personally, working as a clerk might not be for <laughs> <laughs> hey y'all, welcome back to Sisters in Law. We have a special guest today, Sydney Cooper. Woo! <laughs> okay, so y'all requested a clerkship video. Sydney just did a clerkship, literally. So I'm gonna ask her all the questions, everything y'all asked me. But first, like, who are you? What schools you go to? Like, give us like your background, yes. and then we can dive into everything. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. Yes. I'm so excited to be a part of your podcast. Um, wait, is it a podcast or a channel? YouTube channel, yeah. YouTube channel. Excuse Same me, difference. right? Same difference. <laughs> well, my name is Sydney. I am from Atlanta, Georgia originally. I went Southern to... Girls. Yeah, Southern yeah. Girls. I was a volleyball athlete in college, so I played at two universities, University of Louisville and then Virginia Commonwealth University, mm. where I did international business was my major. And so after that, I decided I want to go to law school. I went to Howard, you know, HU. Okay. And, then, <laughs> and it was a great network of attorneys. Just that experience in of itself, just having that network of attorneys is really why I went there. Um, and it helped me get the clerkship that I got. Actually, after graduating from law school, worked for two years at a big law firm. And I was doing primarily employment law and a sprinkle of IP. Now I'm a full IP attorney. Then after two years of working, I started um, clerking at the District of Maryland. So okay. that's how I got there, and I'm back at the firm now. Just finished, literally. So okay. So before, like, asking about the clerkship, like, why did you choose Howard? Like, why Howard? I knew I started to have an interest in law when I was in college, and I was taking all these economics courses. They were talking about certain um, trade regulations and things like that, and that's what really started to interest me in going to law school in the first place. Mm -hmm. Initially, I thought I was gonna go and be like an economics like analyst, mm -hmm. and I wanted to go to London School of Economics. Oh wow! I didn't I, know that about you. Yeah, I started to be like, okay, well, I think actually what I want to do is go to law school because I seem to be more intrigued about the laws that prohibit certain countries from importing things or exporting to different countries. I was more concerned about like the laws that or restrict the, you know, economies from growing in different countries. So that was my like internal, like, okay, let's go to law school and kind of figure it all out. Um, but when I was choosing law schools to get to the main <laughs> question, mm -hmm. um, I actually really knew that I wanted to stay on the East Coast. I knew I wanted to stay on the East Coast. I'm from Atlanta. I didn't really want to go all the way to California quite yet. Yeah, I knew yeah, a lot yeah. of people like were like, oh, we go to California, take a whole separate bar. And yeah. I heard about that. And to me, I was like, well, let's go to the area where at least if I do take the bar, it'll be transferable mm -hmm. to a number of states. Yeah. And looking at schools, I honestly, I hadn't had the HBCU experience yet. Um, and for me, I think, I think it was really important that if I were to get a grad degree or a professional degree to go to an HBCU. So I decided on Howard for that reason, number one, because I know I wanted to go to HBCU. Mm -hmm. Number two, I was reaching out to folks about what law schools to go to and Howard kept coming up just because of the network of attorneys. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was really beneficial because you want to feel that you know, the attorneys that are in your larger network or really your immediate network and then soon to be broader network are people who are going to want to connect with you just right off the bat because of the fact that you went to the same school. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that you can't get that at any other school. But it's different. It's, it's different. different yeah. It's different. Something about that Howard connection. And I also wanted to be in D.C. I knew I wanted to be in D.C. Mm -hmm. I thought about New York. It was a no. <laughs> um, I thought about Philly. That was definitely a no. So yeah. for me, it was kind of DC or I applied to some schools in Atlanta, but I don't I wasn't ready to go home quite yet mm. And so there's a there's tons of law schools in DC. I got a scholarship as well oh, So you guys got to law school I got too? partial academic scholarship. Oh, that's, yeah, so I had yes. like half of my academic scholarship completely paid for that's So amazing. once I got the money as well, yeah, that was also an incident, well. right? And so yeah, that was really why I chose Howard overall and it proved to really help me kind of excel and, and get and got me to where I am now So that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Did you know I was an econ major? No. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, my my God. God. oh my God. I don't meet a lot of people that like took economics. Yeah. yeah. They don't because it's hard. <laughs> Like Girl, nobody does it. Was, that's dope. Okay, well, let's get into the clerkship. So, yes. why did you want to do a clerkship? And then, like, how did you do it? Because I know some people starting like 2L, 3L, they were already applying. I was like, oh my God. Like, so did you apply? But well, why did you want to do it? But also, like, did you apply once you started at the firm? Like, were you mm -hmm. still at Howard? Like, how did. Yeah, I don't have 
I didn't have any attorneys in my family. So it was hard for me to kind of gauge, okay, what's the route to do while you're in law school? Like, what should I try out? I ended up really excelling in legal writing mm. and I became a dean's fellow for the legal writing program. What that means is basically you're the teacher's assistant mm -hmm. um, and you teach, you know, the 1L students when you're in your 3L year, mm. you know, you help them with the citation class and stuff like that. And so because I excelled in legal writing, because I made a really good relationship with my professor, she recommended that I get a clerkship and that I, you know, try to get one and, and just apply. So honestly, it was a scramble because I had no idea that you had to like have been applying like from 1L year. I mean, these, I mean, you were applying 3L. I started applying in 3L. Okay. I actually did not apply to a clerkship until my 3L year because okay. I was like, oh crap, like I really got to start applying. Mm -hmm. I did apply for internships and I did an internship in my 2, 2L year. But yeah, you really had to start applying very, very early. I actually didn't end up getting <clears throat> my clerkship until two years into working. I think though that a lot of people who didn't know like about the timeline for clerkship because a lot of the judges have rolling applications mm. you know if you don't know about it which I didn't then you really just kind of have to get in when you can mm. yeah you really have to get in when you can so I was applying and I actually did get, end up getting a couple interviews my 3L year but I didn't get them they were for a couple judges in New York so they didn't work out but I still kind of like held open you know that hope of getting one it really didn't come for me until later in my you know career a lot of people say you get you should, you're supposed to clerk right out of school yeah but some judges I like that's changing it's changing. Um, yeah. A lot of judges actually require you to have some work experience yeah. before you come because you just kind of have to understand how to manage up. And if you don't have that experience, it's yeah. going to be a lot more difficult for you yeah. um, to be a valuable clerk, like a valuable asset. You can be a legal researcher all you want, but you have to kind of understand how to manage a case mm -hmm. before you go you know, work for a judge, for certain judges, mm. I will say. Well, the one that I got, I actually didn't even apply for. They asked me to apply. Oh, wow. Well, I applied, but they asked me to apply. And my, when my judge had an opening come up, you know, she was kind of reaching out to other judges and their clerks mm. to see who could, who was available. And so that's literally how I was, you know, asked to interview for oh, the judge. Girl. Yeah. So I, Thank yeah, you know. yeah, we can, yeah. So yeah. basically segue, <laughs> everything that I applied for, I didn't get, but then I got asked to apply and obviously I got it. The fact that you apply to so many places is yes. why they reached out to you? I think, I think in part, I applied and I was applying and applying. I kind of like, not saying I gave up on it, but I just kind of was like, oh, if I'm interested in this judge, I'll apply. I, that's another topic, but honestly, you should apply to the, only the judges that you're interested in clerking for. Mm -hmm. Don't apply to a judge that maybe your views don't align, or you, you never I've know. Heard about that. Yeah. You never know. Um, you have to do your research. You really do. Mm -hmm. When was it? July of 2022. So I was a year and a half in at my big law at the big law firm, mm -hmm. and then I got a you know a message from my professor, who I was a dean's fellow for at Howard, saying, "Hey, there's an opening um, for a clerkship position." Start Starting kind of like very soon uh -huh. and I was like what so you know I think things may have fell out and it just kind of like opened up for me mm -hmm. but because I had just always remained interested and I kept yeah. in touch with my professor and stuff like that and she always knew that I wanted one that's how I got the interview okay um, so relationships are important I relationships like are important yeah. they're very important like very, very important. Even now I have a relationship with my judge and I actually just interviewed for another clerkship, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I get it. Yes. Um, but that came up also because of my, you know, connections with my professor. Mm. So words of the wise, when you're in law school, definitely make relationships with your professors and keep them up to date on what they're doing Let them and let them know what you're doing out yeah. in your, as you go on. Yeah, that's yeah. something I like. <clears throat> I feel like that's probably a benefit of going to Howard too. Yeah. Well, also, Samantha, she made really good relationships with some of our professors. Yeah. But it, I just had such a hard time connecting with the professors at Columbia. And it's just like. Yeah. If I had something right now where I needed like a professor's recommendation, mm -hmm. I don't know who I would hit up. Mm -hmm. like, it'd be easier mm -hmm. for me to hit up like a partner for my firm. Wow, than, like, yeah. Professor. So think about that when y'all choosing law schools. Yeah. But um, okay, so about your clerkship. So what did yes. they have you doing? Yes. Like, what is a clerkship? Like, what do you do? Yes. What was your day-to-day -day looking like? So a clerkship, in my opinion, you are really the attorney for the judge. You are the first pen to paper on any order or um, opinion that comes out. You are the manager of all the cases. You'll typically have a co-clerk, so you and the other co-clerk will sp either split the docket however your judge wants you to. We were the, fr the front line of our judge's chambers, is what I will say. Mm -hmm. um, usually judges will have also have a judicial assistant who 
really kind of does a lot of the administrative stuff. Will like, assign us the cases and make sure that we're up to date on what cases are actually ours. Mm -hmm. Consistently keeping track of all the different orders or not orders, but just requests, motions, anything that comes in on each case. Mm -hmm. The judicial assistant handles that, but we handle everything from a substantive point of view. Mm -hmm. So if they're asking for any like on any type of motion that comes in, I have to handle like that and understand kind of what's going on, research the law, what's the appropriate law or standard that we have to use when we're deciding this. We should know what's going on before our judge does. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, it's just so much. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's a lot for one person. We had like 300 cases, like, and I mean, each of, between me and my co-clerk oh, in total to manage. It's a year. And it's a year. So, and so there's this thing called the CJRA, CJRA list, which after a motion is filed, a substantive motion, a motion to dismiss, a motion for summary judgment, the judge has to rule on it within six months. So, well, you know, that's what you're supposed to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. It's a rule about judicial efficiency. We don't want just stuff just hanging out there. Um, you know, like a fifth amendment or whatever amendment that is, or you know, I'm talking about uh, where it's like speedy trial. Speedy trial. Now that's yeah. criminal. Yeah. Oh, so okay. speedy trial is criminal. So my bad, I'm not a litigator. <laughs> no, on the criminal side of things, basically what it is is that when a case is filed, you have to, you know, give that criminal defendant a that's trial right. within, I think, 90 days of filing. And so that's what happens on the criminal side. But yeah, so that's all to say, basically, we're the front front lines of chambers. When a motion comes in, we're the first ones to kind of brief our judge on what the issue is in the case, draft a, a draft order to give to our judge who will review it. And then, you know, either, you know, they have some edits and approve it. The best thing for me was when I would draft an order and my judge would like have a couple minor edits. And I'd be like, oh, oh I know what I'm doing. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You'd be like, wow, like, wow, you know, I, I researched that, but you sure, yeah. you sure? So yeah. those are the most, those are the best feelings when it's just like, you know, you put the work and the time in and then your judge is like, oh yeah, that looks great, boom. Yeah. And, but it, it becomes second nature in the beginning you're kind of like, I don't know what to do. Do I deny this motion? Do I grant it? Do I grant it in part? What do I do? Mm -hmm. And so you really are learning that in the first couple months. I think you kind of get in the groove of it. It really takes about six months, in my opinion, to get in the groove of like knowing exactly what the standard is, exactly mm -hmm. what, you know, needs to happen. But when you have a judge who's been on the court for a minute, you have previous orders that you can kind of go model your mm -hmm. orders off of. So there's something to go off of. If you yeah. don't have anything to go off of, that's when it gets a little tough. Like my judge, she was appointed um, in 2021. Okay. So she didn't have so, too, too many models to mm -hmm. go off of. So we kind of just crafted it ourselves. And But it's it's good because then you can work with your judge on like what it is you know that they want to put out there, which I thought was really fun to do because my, my judge is very active, but she was newly appointed. When your judge has been there for a while, they, they kind of have their ways of you know doing things and there's not much input in my opinion or or, mm -hmm. or you know room to really change kind of their thinking on things and yeah. when you have a newer judge yeah. they're they're really leaning on you to mm -hmm. know what it is that we need to do and so it you know my judge was really collaborative I was you know really thankful for that and some judges aren't as collaborative that's the thing you kind of just you just don't know I mean, yeah that's what I do from it's just a lot of writing tons of writing tons and tons of writing. I mean some days, a lot of research a lot of research yeah. I think the research component you know we had interns for you know in the spring and the summer and the fall so sometimes we would have our interns do the initial research but sometimes mm -hmm. you know as a clerk you kind of know exactly what you're looking for and you don't mm -hmm. want to send the intern doing something that's just going to have them in the in the weeds and yeah. and not getting to the point yeah <laughs> so you have to guide them a little bit but that's also what's good about having interns as well mm -hmm. and, and managing a year right mine was a year summer two years but I think a year is good I think a year is a good enough amount of yeah, time to get the experience yeah I mean yeah. it's just tons of writing all I mean literally writing all day some judges are really really involved in the opinion writing you know mine was very collaborative I mean we worked together on the facts, all the issues, the wow. analysis, the conclusion. I mean, from, you know, it was really kind of a back and forth. Like, I draft it, she looks at it. I draft mm. it, she looks at it. And that was That's how we were. That's a great experience. Yeah. So, like, it was you're learning experience. directly from the judge. That's directly like, from the judge, absolutely. Yeah. And it was a great experience. You know, mm. my judge really wanted us to speak with her about all the issues in the case. And she will kind of go back and forth with you. Okay, why do you think that's an issue? Mm. Um, or this is what I think the issues are. Mm. Why do you think, you know, and she really would challenge you as an attorney to kind of just get to the point. And also, <laughs> in just in 
just understanding cases a little bit yeah. um, more efficiently mm. and how to decide them more efficiently. So I think having done the clerkship, I mean, in my writing and also just in my analytical reasoning skills, I'm very much more just like very pinpoint focus on what I'm doing yeah instead of all this other stuff I mean I'm literally you know really focused on getting down to the very the very point of it and not being all over the place yeah um, and that's what my clerkship helped me do for sure how many like trials did you see I know you have 300 cases but how many trials did you yeah. see like actually them like you know so it was thing? interesting I actually didn't have any civil trials we had okay. a lot of pre-trial motions so you know motions to exclude certain evidence mm. and that stuff takes a lot of work because you have to really look at the record and see like what are the attorneys proffering to say that certain evidence is not relevant or, mm. or a certain expert shouldn't be allowed to testify on certain topics sometimes mm. those topics are also very complicated yeah so you know the pre-trial motions phase can be hefty as well but yeah so i saw a couple of criminal trials actually okay. but but no straight up just civil trials we scheduled a ton of them so i'm sure the clerks that are there now they're like getting that are busy i mean the amount of trials that we i remember like scheduling and then like pushing out while i was there i mean it was so many that mm. Now I know the clerks there are kind of like, they're definitely slammed. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I didn't see any civil trials. I wish I would have had the opportunity, but that mm -hmm. would just happen to be the, the it's time. It's a timing It was a timing, it was a timing yeah. thing, yeah. A lot of parties though, sometimes you'll get so close to trial and then they'll settle. And you're like, what yeah. the heck, I did all that work. But jury trials are very interesting because you never know which way the jury's gonna go. Juries will take it and think of it in a, in a real world sense. Yeah. And if the real world doesn't always match the legal world. It doesn't. It doesn't. And this yeah. shows you time and time again. Um, and I think that that's the most interesting part of trials because you would think that on paper, everything is spelled out and you're like, oh yeah, there's no way defense is gonna be able to defend this one. But then, you know, the jury just might flip it on its head. Yeah. So that's the, the jury, interesting part. I feel like they see through a lot of BS. Like, they do. They do. Yeah. They do. I just asked, I just got like jury duty and I'm like kind of excited about it. Oh my it. gosh. Wait, where? Me. Here? Yeah. Wait, do you have a DC ID? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. like, I haven't updated mine. I am yeah. still a Georgia resident. <laughs> I like, I, I put it off forever, but yeah. for my car, for your you're car. like, you're gonna save on taxes or whatever. You're gonna save on something. And I was like, savings? Yeah. Okay. The period. So, yeah, I, I haven't switched my ID. I, I haven't switched mine, girl, but that's because my. Tag is still Georgia. Yeah, so no, I have we'll DC cross tag. that path. I know for yeah. future Sydney, we'll deal with that. Yeah, and no, I have DC tags. I have a DC like permanent address at the house. Yeah, so, okay. girl, I was like, oh my god, we. I hope, I hope I actually get to be on it. Come be like, yes. not guilty. Yes. You can't. They're not <laughs> gonna know, let you. Know. First of all, if you tell, as soon as you tell them that you're an attorney, they're gonna be like, next. Yeah, I know. Like you, no attorneys stay on juries. I, I have not seen any. One of my coworkers, she was like on grand jury duty for like two weeks. Really. Yes. What I mean must have been something that is like very not related to. Maybe she said it was a lot of like horrific stuff. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah but I mean, like, but I don't even, want typically, like that. typically though, if you even tell them that you took a legal course, yeah, they know. will be. They don't like journalists. They don't either. like any of that because your your mind is just a little bit different in terms yeah. of how you think of stuff. You, yeah. So that's interesting. Though. I know. Your friend was I'm on like, a trial. For two yeah. Weeks. <laughs> she was on trial for two weeks. I was like, dang, girl. So you talked about like the benefits. Like he got like the analytical like reasoning. He was right. Mm -hmm. So, like, what were some of the downsides, if any, yeah. that you would want to share with someone that's interested or, like, wants to do a clerkship? Yeah. I mean, so, number one, my judge required us to be in person mm -hmm. 9 to 6, Monday through Friday, every week of the year. I mean... And up until, you know, the holiday season where there's that break in between um, Thanksgiving and Christmas, we're still working, but and we were but we were working remotely. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, I mean, you're working for a judge and the court doesn't stop. Yeah. So we were given one week of PTO, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's not like real PTO, but it's just all discretionary. But your judge doesn't even have to give you that. Mm -hmm. So they typically do, but you really don't get time time off. If yeah. I have an appointment or something, it was really hard to schedule. You do not have the flexibility that you have mm. at a company at a firm mm. you just do not have the flexibility like now I'm back to the firm life so I can take my dry cleaning if I need to and yeah. go pick it up no you do not really have much flexibility granted it is for a year yeah only a year yeah if you were there two years I'm sure there might be like more structured PTO but you really kind of have to pick your week 
um, wow. <laughs> strategically. Oh God, that is such I haven't time. been on vacation. I still haven't been on vacation um, since May of last year. So, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, but hey, that's a privilege that I can even go on a vacation and a lot of people don't have the opportunity. But I, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You work a lot at these at a firm. You, you'll work a lot at, you know, a government agency, but you really work a lot, a lot with the judge. I typically had my evenings, unless it was like, okay, I know my judge is gonna be asking for this on her desk at 9 a.m., no mm-hmm. later, maybe earlier. You know, if it was like, okay, I know I just need to get this done, maybe I focus too much on something else one day. And on the weekends, I didn't typically have to work. I might've worked only a few weekends, sprinkle here and there, unless it was like, okay, I just need to look more into this issue. I wanna be more prepared. Mm-hmm. But I never felt like, oh, the weekend, I gotta spend all weekend working. Maybe mm-hmm. I would spend a couple hours on a Sunday morning or Saturday morning, excuse me, trying to figure something out. But, you know, well, that's also a difference with a firm life. Firm, you might have to be working on the weekend, you know, just to get something done. You might have to work all weekend. You might have to work all weekend. (laughs) And yeah, so there's differences in terms of your time, but I will say the schedule during the week, there is no flexibility. It's very minimal. Another downside, I would say, if you work for a judge, you know, I had my social media all turned private. Mm -hmm. I had to really be careful about whatever I put out on social media because Mm -hmm. people know you're a law clerk, they can look up your name. And my socials aren't really tied to my name, but in the event that anything was, you know, you just have to be a little bit more careful and tread a little bit more careful about where you go, who you're with. Not saying you're a celebrity, you're not. Yeah, but you are really connected to a judge mm-hmm. and you have to treat it as such and carry yourself as such at all times. Yeah. And you would, you know, you, you would do that any, I mean, anyways, like yeah. I, I carry myself in the manner you of- You to think about it like- Right. Yeah. I carry myself in a manner of the fact that I'm an attorney and I'm, you know, I don't want anyone to ever be like, oh, your bar license, you know, just stuff mm-hmm. like that. You always want to be careful now you're you're in a profession. Mm-hmm. Regardless of the profession, you always want to be careful. But like with the judge, I just always felt like, ooh, I can't even post the, you know, just things like I would want to repost on my story. Yeah. That is just like, I just can't even do that. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. You never know who's watching. And that's really another, I mean, technically a downside, but more so just something you have to think about. Would you ever be a judge? Like, would you consider that? No. no. I think after doing the cook shit. Yeah, no, that's, that's real. It's hard. It's so much. Yeah, it seems very hard. It is so much writing. You never catch up. Yeah. You never catch up because there's just constantly, people are constantly filing motions, filing mm-hmm. motions, filing requests. Seriously, you never catch up. Mm-hmm. So no, I wouldn't want to be a judge only for the fact that there's the volume, the sheer yeah. volume of stuff is yeah. the only reason why. Maybe if I was, you know, if there was ever a chance to be a judge where you don't need to do so much, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I was a magistrate, but even the magistrate mm. judges work a lot. They typically handle all the like discovery disputes. Mm. Even that stuff, I mean, and that stuff needs to happen quickly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, like, no, I don't yeah. think I would want to be a judge. Just the public eye, like, that's I, the part that I'm, I'm like, a little, yeah. I'm a creative. I want to do things. Mm. I don't want that much scrutiny mm. on my life. I just personally don't. Mm. Um, and so that's why I, I, I wouldn't be a judge. Yeah. Although I think it's a very noble position. I do think we need judges, we need teachers. We need stuff like that. You know, we need people to aspire to be in these roles. Judges are gonna be judges for a long time. So I'm sure it's, it's hard to even become a judge. I personally am not interested. We'll see what God has in store for me. <laughs> I mean, I guess one other downside. I mean, it's just you and the judge and mm-hmm. your co-clerk all year. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're not really in a big law firm or mm. company where you have the opportunity to interact with a lot of other folks. Ultimately, you're seeing the same set of folks all year long, Mm. every day. And so I would say a downside is that, you know, you really, you have to like, you have to get to like those people that share Mm. around. Cause you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to like trust them on Mm. certain things. And so you're serving one master, which can be, Difficult. I think it's a pro well, and a con. I've never heard a phrase like that. I mean, that's basically <laughs> yeah. it. Is. You're, not, you're not you're not serving multiple people. Yeah. When I you know when I say serving one master is like yeah. it just means. No, know. I know. It's like you have, in the colloquial you know, sense. No, no, I know. I know at a firm it's like you have like 13, 14 bosses. Thirteen, fourteen bosses. Yeah. No, you got one boss, yeah. and that's really it. Um, yeah. So, but there's pros and cons to both of those things. Yeah. And you know. Judges can be tough to work for. Mm-hmm. They can be, it can be demanding. Because um, to be able to even do that, like to handle that volume, I feel like it takes a certain kind of person. It takes a certain kind of person. Yeah. Some, they don't even, like, no BS. No BS. <laughs> Sometimes like before I would even go to my judge's office, I mean, you gotta, 
have it all up here and be ready. I never really ask my judge a question. Like I ask questions, but I always, and when I say that, like obviously I ask questions, mm -hmm. but I always did it with like, okay, here's my recommendation on something I'm seeing. And then I would ask the question. So, you know, you always kind of have to have your answer ready and, and shown that you have done an analysis first before you even kind of go in there because you just never know what they're going to throw at you. <laughs> so sometimes working for judges can be a bit unpredictable in terms of what you're going to get because you never know if it's going to be a good day to talk to them or not. They have a lot to deal with, yeah. so I can see why. Yeah. But, you know, judges are very, I think they can be very strict. They just are. I mean, mm -hmm. they, but they kind of have to be. Yeah. So, you know, if you if you can work with that type of style, then we're doing a clerkship for you. But you should really know about that. Like, you shouldn't go in and just think that you can just walk in your judge's office and just say whatever. No. no. You, need, you shouldn't be thinking that anyway. You shouldn't it's be a thinking judge that. It's a judge. Day, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just always have to be very prepared before you ask questions. And I would say that that's a good Thing to do with any job that you have mm -hmm. but with the judge in particular you know because mm -hmm. they're also very particular about stuff you might not like the tone that they say it in but sometimes it's just because they have so much to focus on so at the end of the day you know if you take stuff personally working as a clerk might not be for <laughs> you actually being an attorney might not be yeah. for you because opposing counsel might get mouthy yeah. other people in the firm might get mouthy yeah. just with how they say stuff some attorneys I, I would say don't have very many social skills like some do well, others don't 100 like, percent like yeah it yeah. could be in any field but especially attorney. yeah. attorneys i'm like Oh my God, that's so rude. No, I will say, especially when it comes to judges, you know, they can be picky, they can be finicky, they can be strict, and they can be to the point. And mm. it might not, it's not about you. It never is. Yeah. Okay, so what would you tell someone, or what have you not shared so far that you think will be important for someone to know who's interested in a clerkship, just wants to know more about it? Maybe some people watching probably have never heard of what that is. So like, yeah. what would you say, like your main takeaways, what, you, what advice would you give? Okay, the main takeaways from, you know, a, cl a clerkship is that if you are a litigator, someone who expects to be in court or wants to be in court, that a clerkship is a great opportunity mm -hmm. because it helps you see things from the lens of a judge. Mm -hmm. It improves your writing and this helps your understanding of how to really take a case from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. You'll get to see other attorneys argue and you'll know who are the bad attorneys and who are the good ones. Mm -hmm. um, and it just kind of shape you, I think, into a really great litigator, um, especially at the trial level. If you're going to be a trial um, or work for a judge that's a district judge or something like that. Um, so, you know, all around, it's really good for you if you're a litigator. You know, my advice is just that I think, you know, definitely do your research on the judges that you're interested in clerking for. Do your research, you know, try your hardest to network with folks who have previously clerked for them. Get your name out there, put in the applications, but also email the chambers. Reach out, call, say, hey, is the judge accepting? Um, applications and if you're at a law school reach out to your legal writing professors and maintain the relationships with your writing professors especially it's just you know stay open-minded put your name in the hat constantly um, and maintain those relationships with your professors and you'll be golden so that's what I'll say yes okay yes. well thank you so of much for joining thank us. you for having me y'all let me know if you want to interview anyone else about another topic that Samantha and I haven't covered yet um, any other like nooks and crooks of legal profession I'm happy to find a friend, phone a friend, and get them to come up here yes. and like do an, an, an episode, do a video with me. So that's all for today. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and share, and watch out for more videos. Bye, Bye. guys.